All right. So the first thing that I want to cover. So this week um, we'll be covering uh, uh, the a uh, marketing gem for the week, which is uh, or the fortnight, I should say, which is ads to uh, lander uh, congruency. Uh, this allows us to. Oh, forgot some arrows here. Uh, essentially, ensure that whatever the uh, the hook or the appeal of the ad that you you are pushing that or the conversation you're having in the ad is going to be uh, is going to be the same as the conversation that you are having on the landing page. Uh, so one of the reasons I I'm seeing, uh, especially in the reviews that I'm doing, is that the ad's good and the landing page is good, but the ad does not belong with the landing page because the the conversation is a little bit different. So let me give you an example. Let's say if you're running a solar funnel and your ad says zero down solar and you come to uh, the landing page is talking about solar rebates, for example. And it's often, and so you can really you can have a great ad about zero down solar. It just doesn't belong with a landing page that is talking about something a little bit different. Yeah, the market may be the same, still solar, but just having that misalignment sometimes results in uh, you um, you're wasting a lot of money on your ads, right? So, so what happens is any any all your ad spend, the effort, time, and energy you spent to make the ad, to run traffic to the ad, and to pay for the ads uh, is largely wasted. And you may even enjoy a nice click through. And had it um, had you sent that particular uh, ad to the right landing page, then you would um, probably see a better conversion, right? So. That's the first thing. Now, what should the setup look like? So you have your ad, you move to your landing page, you have your ad appeal, move to the landing page, and your third appeal will move to its own uh, connected or relevant landing page. Now, at its simplest version, you would create um, a separate campaign or ad and have its own page. That unfortunately is quite inefficient. And I'll be sharing with you how to do that at scale without having to create thousands of or hundreds of or tens of pages. Um, just for testing purposes. Right, so before I move on to um, sharing with you guys how this applies inside Leads Hook as a feature, are there any questions? Feel free to feel free to uh, mute yourself and uh, ask uh, any questions you might have in application or hopefully you understood what I was referring to here in terms of the overall concept. Any questions on this? Feel free to uh, or post in the chat if you want to, as well. Okay. If there's no questions, I'll move on to the next uh, section, which is. Uh, I guess I have uh, a question. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Um, it kind of makes or it makes sense, definitely. Um, I'm just wondering how, like, how how different do they need to be? I mean, the ads because. I do a lot of Google ads and uh, I mean, yep. essentially it's, it's a lot the same, like, uh, you know, if, if you, if you have a keyword for a uh, paint job and paint job company, and there's a lot of keywords that are very similar <laughs> and the same with the ads that I'm creating, of course, I could test a very, you know, some very different, uh, ads, uh, you know, one, one playing on fear, one playing on you know, uh, the dream that you have of getting a nice home. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just wondering how, how different the ads needs to be in order for it to be worth it to create a whole new landing page. Yeah, good, good, um, good, good question. So you want to you, you wanna keep the appeal the same. So fear would be a different angle to, for example, uh, you know, greed or something. So your your fear based, uh, you would want to keep those uh, that go to its own page, uh, to for example greed or for uh, any or envy or or any of the other appeals that you might have. the The point here is 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 not that uh, is is you're trying to see which conversation is resulting in conversions. Now you may get you may find an appeal that gets a lot of click throughs, for example, but just no conversions. Now that doesn't mean that the appeal itself is bad. Maybe a specific, uh, your specific test is not uh, is not quite relevant or may not work. So what you can do then is is turn those appeals off that are not working, double down on the one that is working, and you test many more variations. So so think of um, 
try and try and group them in, in, in a logical way. For example, I can create five ads around greed and I can drive it to the one page, right? And so, but if I move, so for example, let's say, uh, let's look at the solar example again. Uh, if I got zero down solar, I, I'm, I may write 25 different ads, 25 different ways of saying zero down solar. So they would all go to the same landing page for zero down solar. But the minute I move to solar rebates, for example, then I want to move solar rebates to its own landing page about, about solar rebates itself. But I may have 25 different ads or uh, different ways of talking about solar rebates. Uh, does that kind of make sense? Oh, it definitely makes sense. I, I think I'm just, I guess I'm talking a little bit uh, in East and West, but uh, I guess my experience with Google Ads is often that it's, uh, you know, what works the best is usually just, you know, get a free quote now or whatever. It's, it's very, it's very basic. Uh, you know, I know all about the, uh, you know, Perry Marshall's uh, Swish right. Army okay. now. Okay, and so, I, right. uh, okay. But, so, so in that case, yeah. so in that case you, you can just free quote on its own will give you a certain amount of conversions. But what other ways can you say free quote, right? So so if 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 you are talking about different conversations around free quote, then you could drive them to separate pages the, the important part is that is that whatever you're talking about, if, if you are changing the conversation around free quotes, then you drive it to the new page, to a, a different page. Now, of course, if you just, if free quotes is the only thing that's working for you, feel free to stick to free quotes, drive it to the one page around free quotes. It's, it's the minute you change the conversation is where you want to move to its own page that is related, right? That's that's the whole thing. Now, I know, I know so, there's no hard so and fast just, route. So, sorry. Yep, go on. Uh, so I was just thinking, is it so? Is it is it uh, sort of not worth my time if I just wanted to test uh, smaller things? Uh, maybe not fear, fear uh, versus uh, you know something happy, uh, but but just smaller things. Would it then make sense to to test it actually and then set it to a, to the same landing page? But I'm only changing the headline. Would that make sense, or is that just you know kind of waste uh, of my time? the headline. Provided the headline is around the same concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. That's correct. Yeah. So, so as long as your headline is around the same concept, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so normally, what I find is that is that one of the best ways to start a campaign is to go wide and find different uh, appeals and ideas that you might want to test with. And in that case, your very first test would look something along a line like this. Now, as you start as you start knocking concepts out that aren't working for you. And you may come down to just one or two. In that case, you could drive, uh, you know, sort of. Uh, in that in that case, you could consolidate that that your conversations aren't changing too much, even if your ads are. So so then in that case, you you keep them. Uh, you would drive it to one page, and then you have another group of 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 uh, ads that are going uh, that are st staying on concept. You drive it to another page. So generally speaking, whenever you start, so for example, uh, one of the campaigns that I was helping in the real estate space. We had uh, 18 different concepts, so sitting in 18 different ad sets or ad groups, and each one of those was going to 18 different pages. And then after uh, you know a week or so, we realized that that about you know about 50 percent or 60 percent of those weren't working. Those were shut off straight away. We found that four or five worked really well, and then we said, okay, right, uh, let's come up with new con new ads that talk about the same concept, at, but at every point in time, remaining with the same at the concept level so if your if your concept or your, or your idea is the same then you drive it to the same page if you if you move the conversation you drive it to another page okay makes sense thanks cool no no problem all right so how do you uh, execute this um sorry are there any other follow-up questions on this i'll just have a quick look no i'm, I'm not seeing any more questions all right so how do you use this inside inside leads hook um so if I were to do this inside Leadtook, what would you do? Obviously, one of the ways to do it is uh, is without Leadtook, that is, you would uh, obviously go and create multiple pages. Uh, the and of course, I'm not saying this is exclusive to uh, to to just Leadtook. You can do it in uh, what uh, there are a few few ways to execute this the whole strategy. So let me share with you um, one of the one of the, uh, the the two different ways that you can do it. So the first one is that you can make uh, separate pages. And that's the the most obvious one, and I would I'm, and I'm calling that clone the decision tree or clone your page. The second one is to use decision nodes with uh, custom fields. What does that look like? All right, so I would add that right to the top here. 
right now before I show you this uh, we just added this in um, so in case uh, um, if you're in the preview mode in version two you can actually come here and add in your own headlines and stuff so if you want to do if you're looking for some rapid tests you don't need to go and create another page in WordPress or Unbounce or whatever the heck it is. You could just make a page directly inside inside Leadsook itself and publish and go live. All right. So that is a quick and easy way for you to do some testing with. That's the kind of like the, 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 the first, the new thing that we've just added in. Um, and in order to get there, all it is is preview. So go direct link, preview, open up in a new page, opens up here. You'll see preview equals true. And that allows you to basically add the header and the footer. And even if you move to the next node, the header and the footer remains the same. So it's kind of like your um, quick and easy landing page. All right, that's the first thing. Now, how do we use the decision nodes here? So the first thing to do is to, um, let's say for example, if I'm gonna have my appeal, so this is gonna be, let's just call it uh, zero down. So look, it's been something I've been working on. I'm gonna go UTM. Uh, let's go UTM campaign equals uh, zero uh, down. Let's just call it that. Uh, open up my uh, custom fields and I can now, I already have these fields. In some of the campaigns we're doing, we're doing call to action, we're doing proof elements, we're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. In this case, I've just got my prehead, my headline and my deck. So prehead right on top, headline is the second thing and then the prehead uh, below that, like so. Um, oops, did I not select it? I didn't select it, sorry. Right, fix. These are just custom fields inside inside uh, uh, Leads Hook. You can create as many as you want. So there you go, there's my deck copy, there's my headline, and there's my uh, prehead. Obviously, they'll actually be actual headlines, actual text. And that's my zero down campaign. And my campaign is this. Now this could be an ad set, this could be an ad group, this could be any any, any way you structure your campaign. All we're looking for is, is a way to differentiate them. I'm using UTM campaign in this case, but you could use any other field that you uh, want to. And obviously you'll pass that inside UTM campaign. So UTM so campaign will have zero down um, solo uh, or zero down in this case, like so. And of course, go and add in all the rest of them. So in most cases, you'll just go clone that, edit, and it'll be whatever, let's say uh, rebate. And then you'll have your content around rebate. I'll call it, uh, this is gonna be solar rebates. Let's save and exit, and you can add as many of those as you want. So we've done up to 20 or 30 at one time. Um, and this is gonna be, I'm gonna just call it personalize. Oops, pers personalize uh, lander, right, save and exit. And you would then go directly like so. Now on my page here, instead of instead of this, I will actually add the headline in. So it's a underscore FIX uh, prehead. And then here it'll be uh, uh, FIX underscore well, I'm, it, it, that's just the, the curly brackets to put the uh, to put the headline in. Uh, we just added this in, so we haven't got the uh, the drop down in, in yet, but very shortly, very soon, you'll be able to just uh, uh, put in um, uh, just to do the curly bracket and automatically all your fields will will pop up. That's coming in the next uh, couple of days. All right, then comes your deck. So now what happens is when the when when um, when your 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 URL is a question mark, uh, so UTM underscore campaign is uh, let's say uh, zero down uh, solar or zero down. I think it was. As soon as you see this, these will automatically be replaced with these uh, these values uh, right here, one two three, right? And that's essentially is that is how you were executing this particular strategy here. So your ads can be as many as you want across any number of campaigns, ad sets, ads groups, whatever it is, but they all go to the one page, but the, the, but the, the, uh, the, the custom fields are, are personalized as they pass us through. So Leadsuk will read, it says, oh, zero down. Cool, I got to replace 
these three custom fields with these values here. Obviously, in this in your in, in the real campaign, it'll be, a, it'll be real text. And what happens then is that these values here will automatically be replaced with those headlines that you've got sitting inside uh, the decision node. And that is how you end up building this at scale. So no matter where they end up with, they always have um, they always have um, this type of uh, your headline, your 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 body copy, your proof elements, your whatever you want to put onto the page, and you can add as many elements as you want. They are all uh, they are all in sync or congruent with the ad itself, and that essentially is one of the fastest way to improve the start rate of the first node for your conversions. Right, so that's kind of like the basic concept. It's it's one that a lot of people don't use, um, but it's the one that's uh, very easy to execute, as you can see over here. Um, now you can do this unbounce or WordPress or whatever it is. Uh, I'm just showing you the easy way to how you'd execute it inside inside uh, Leadsook itself, and uh, that is um, how we uh, um, end up implementing this. Any, any questions on the implementation of this? It's really quite quite simple. All you're doing is you're using these yellow nodes here. And uh, depending on how many of uh, campaigns you've got, the ideas, uh, the appeals that you have, you would just add them as one separate uh, decision path. You'd have, have your one way to differentiate this. Obviously, this is the UTM that you would, uh, the exit URL or the destination URL that you got in your ads, you will be, you'll update those with this. And uh, and then uh, when Leadsook reads, it's that it's, uh, this, this condition is true. It replaces these, um, uh, these custom fields with these values here. And then those are then displayed uh, dynamically in place of this, in this manner. Yeah, exactly. So if, if you, and so this is now, this can be calculated, this, this could be calculations as well. Uh, now inside lead took because you can build uh, multiple conditions. Uh, we have users who do things like, uh, you know, so you can add if and or conditions and all sorts of stuff. So you can actually make them quite as fancy as you need them to be. But this is one way to, to do it. And uh, and because we've added this in recently, the, a full landing page builder part is coming uh, hopefully this week. If not next week, we should have that in place. So you'll have a full landing page builder around the decision tree as well. So in, uh, the embed, you don't have to embed it anymore. It just makes tracking and stuff super simple. Yeah, cool. Thanks, uh, J.A., uh, whatever the name is. Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good. So how cool. is the landing page builder work? Is it is it built in with the lead hook or is it a separate software no, inside in inside no no inside inside leads hook it's a it's a library we, uh, we added in inside inside leads hook itself the 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 difference is that is that because we have total control of it now means that you can do stuff like this without having to pass things in the you know, like like it just it makes uh, the execution really really simple uh and also because it's sitting inside leads hook they, you're no longer embedding it so that idea of passing uh, embeds back into the parent page and all that sort of stuff. And th that really does people's heads in when it comes to tracking. Uh, it simplifies a lot of the execution part of it. That's the whole point. So, so where would that be in the UX? Is it on the, like your standard? Yeah, so the first place is gonna be, yeah. So the firstly, uh, we're gonna be replacing this with that. So that's the first thing. The secondly is inside, this will all disappear actually. This is this won't exist anymore. It's actually, uh, like the full builder is sitting inside here. So when you open up your node, you'll see a builder with all of the uh, all of the options sitting on the on, on the on the right hand side. You can drag and drop your buttons and whatever else there is, and you're building in, in a WYSIWYG environment. Essentially, you're building in an environment that looks like this. That's I'll, a big change. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, massive change. We're moving away from uh, from this actually. Um, as in, for a while, they both will coexist, obviously, but at some point, we'll actually drop drop this. Um, we've, yeah, the most common feedback we've received is is uh, I don't know what it looks like. So, um, which 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 hasn't affected the technical users, but the non technical users, 
really have struggled with uh, with with that. So um, yeah, twenty twenty four is a mass market. So we're adding that in. I'll have some training coming out this uh, in the next uh, day or two on the on the experiments that have come out. We've already got a couple of users who have started using it. Um, and uh, that's coming out very shortly. So this is server side split tester, and that's coming out very shortly too. Well, it's already really released. I just haven't done any training for it yet. I'm waiting for one small update that I wasn't happy with. So as soon as that's done, I'll make some training on it. So it just prevents me from re-recording everything. But the difference is, or the good, the 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 innovative part is that you can actually use your URL here, and um, depending on what custom domains you have, you pick whatever you want. And that split test will be used in that your own custom domain, which you may have verified in Google and Facebook or whatever else there is. Uh, add that as your destination URL. And then what happens each time you publish is actually it creates uh, another test variant. So you don't have to change your destination URL anymore in your ads and continually test newer and newer pages. So, for example, let's say if I want to add, uh, you know, um, another, I'll just add this here. As an example, so let's say my next test, I want to test this versus this. I can actually go ahead and remove this one, publish it, and all of a sudden that destination URL doesn't change. And now I'm testing between this one and this one. Obviously, I'll remove the middle one. So, so because the, what, because obviously each time you change the destination URL, your your um, your ads go back into learning mode and all that sort of stuff. It avoids all that. So if you do, if you don't want to touch your ads, you don't have to. You can continue to run. Um, multiple pages over and over and over again uh, without ever changing your ads if you don't need to. So that's a real nice little addition there because the because, because what is annoying me a lot whenever I do a split test and I could, could come up with a new experiment, the, the damn URL changes and now you want to go, you're going to have to clone your campaign, all the other stuff. And so you don't ever have to clone your campaign even if you don't want to, providing you're touching the ads, obviously. So if you're happy with the ads and you just want to rotate different pages to try and get the start rate up or to try and get the conversion rate of your of your decision tree and or your lander up, you don't have to go and touch your landing page if you don't want to. And any in any UTM parameter you, you add to this automatically gets sent over to the pages itself. And that means that all your conversion tracking and all, or any other existing tracking you've got all just works as is. But I'll have more to share on that very shortly. Right, which leads me to um, to uh, our last bit here, which is uh, a bottleneck Q and A. Feel free to uh, to ask anything you want about your market. I suggest you uh, introduce yourself and um, um, and share your market or whatever it is that you need help with. And if it's something to do with lead hook, I'll share it here. Otherwise, happy to answer the question, even if it's non lead hook related. Any questions? Hi, Nick. It's, it's Theo here. Um, hey, just a couple of, Yeah, not too bad. Thanks, yourself. Yeah, good. Thank you. Good. A um, couple of questions. So okay. I've seen mixed things on probably the lead hook Facebook page and stuff. Do you have any statistics around, like, say, things like where the quiz goes straight into the quiz or whether it has a start page? Do you know um the efficacy rates of EVA and which is more effective and certain things that we can do to tweak quizzes that are based on statistics. Okay. All right. So the first thing is depending on whether you're doing lead gen or you're doing sales conversion. So what I mean by that is mm -hmm. we've got we've got clients who who um who are running traffic for their own funnels. And so what they want to do is they want to they because their sales uh teams are quite expensive in that you've got mm -hmm. someone who's dialing out and all that sort of stuff. So they want to make sure that they only put people in the calendar uh, or anyone in their in, on their books that is more likely to buy. And they're not interested in the volume of leads. They're interested in just the quality of leads. So they they mm -hmm. they, they, they don't mind losing people along the way. But those pe yeah. people, I would say that you want to test for a start page that really talks up what the value on the page is, including, um, and so that would be one test. Now, my, my go-to uh, format uh, and so if I were to start out, let's say, let's say new market, I know nothing about the market, then this is the, uh, the format that I would use. Let me just uh, move this out of the way here. Uh, go to uh, Facebook um, and go to 
uh, and do a search for trifle. All right. So this is my my gate my my go to um, sort of design. Let me just blow it up a bit. Hopefully you can see that. Mm -hmm. uh, where I, I've got the I've got the proof element on top, uh, and then uh, obviously my headline with the exclusion urgency or, or scarcity, yada, yada yada yada. I have my speed of uh, benefit statement at the top, so something like it takes only thirty seconds to discover, uh, you know, how much uh, you're overpaying for your power bills, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, an arrow or something to draw the attention here. Risk reversal. This is a private secure. Uh, and um, and your information is not shared uh, with anybody else, that sort of thing. Immediately mm -hmm. uh, bring up your proof of results. It could be like a, a four across or a three across uh, where you show kind of like, um, you know, you know the, sort of how, how good, the, how good the, the, the service is. And then the emotional connection here is, you know, um, you know stop overpaying for your power bills, um, yada, yada, yada. And then edifying the decision tree. This is uh, essentially... Uh, why is this page so different to any other page they're going to see on the internet today? So you're finding points of difference and you and you showcase them over here. For example, we only work with uh, certified contractors. We've already saved hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in in, uh, in power bills saved um, or whatever. And then mm -hmm. a little bit about us. That's the basic structure that I would follow and I would drive traffic to here, especially if it's Google search and or Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you get or a TikTok even to some extent. Now, if you go okay. to if you go to now if you're moving to something like native, then things are going to be a little bit different. I would test this as native straight away just to see mm -hmm. if it works or not. Sometimes it does work. I've seen native campaigns that work directly to a page like this, and it, it's it's a well. Most will tell you oh, you, you got to drive them to um, to uh, to like a, a a a an article of some sort, an editorial, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not necessarily that you have to drive them to an editorial. If you've already built a page like this for your Facebook ads or your Google ads or your TikTok ads, then just leverage that. Like just drive drive hundred mm. bucks or thousand bucks of the traffic to a page like this and see if it gets you results or not. Sometimes it will just work out, out of the box. Now, having mm -hmm. said that, what matters is what what is the conversation in the ad about? Are you going for an unaware market or are you going for someone who's who's interested in the offer, someone who's been in the space a while. And that you need to consider that as well as part of the equation here. Obviously, if your ads are all about uh, offer related, something like a Google search, get a free quote now. Well, then I would expect that on the page that I arrive, that I would see free quote. And there's no need for you to needlessly add a start page or a, a separate page and then move to the quiz. You can just dump directly dump them to the, the quiz. Now, in terms mm -hmm. of the spit test that you want to do, that, that would be something that you test with at some later stage. But as far as I'm concerned, drive them directly to the quiz or the lead capture as early as possible. And then if that doesn't work, then you want to uh, break it down. Uh, I've got a whole uh, couple of things in the in the Facebook group on, uh, I think I called it, um, uh, you know, how to move the needle in one hour or something, mm -hmm. where I, I showed like 15 to 20 things you, 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 you need to, you can test for pretty much straight away. Obviously, if your ads have very low click-throughs, then that's where the focus should be. If your start rates are very low, then you want to focus on the on the proof elements and and uh, sort of copy on the page itself. If people are dropping halfway through the decision tree or something of that sort, then obviously what you look at is uh, is the stats that you see inside here. We've uh, mm -hmm. put lots of improvements recently. Uh, we've done lots of improvements recently on um, in the analytics over here. Uh, I'm not sure how much what data we have sitting inside here, but what it's going to show you is how many people are coming in. Uh, and out, and we and that percentage there shows you the conversion mm -hmm. of the node it, it itself. So, so that is how I would go about doing it. So, but in terms of okay. numbers and stats, uh, we've got campaigns that are working without without start pages. We've also mm -hmm. got people who are doing really really well uh, with start pages. It all depends on the funnel. But as I said to you, it all depends on. What is the overall objective? If you are the business owner themselves, who's 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 driving traffic or leads for the sales teams, then you are motivated by ensuring that you only give high quality to your team, and you're weeding a lot of people out. In which case, a start page could act as your first point of call to weed a bunch of people out because you're not looking for tire kickers to end up uh, wasting your mm -hmm. sales team's time, and that would be it. But if you are getting paid on a per lead basis. Then obviously you're slightly differently motivated. You're motivated by a volume of leads, even if some of them are crap, because provided because you're going to get paid for them. 
provided you're not, you're not breaching any thresholds, like you know one in 10 converting uh, or something on those lines, your client will happily take those, in which case you don't want to weed them out unnecessarily by adding a start page up front. Okay. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense, yeah. So it kind of that kind of answers my second question. So we we're running um, lead gen for car finance space in the UK. Yeah. So landing page is converting yeah. maybe around five percent. Ideally, I want it around ten percent. So that, that if I follow your kind of process that you just mapped out there, the trifle um, and split test that, that's the next steps in terms of trying to push up that conversion rate. Yeah. Okay. So so. What you want to see is, uh, so the first thing to check on your, on your landing page conversion, that is, is how many people mm -hmm. are starting your decision tree, right? Or how many mm -hmm. people are starting your quiz? And and if that if that number is too low, then it's got nothing to do with your quiz because obviously, mm -hmm. um, you know, people will gladly start if there was enough proof elements on this stage. So in that case, I would look at changing the headline. Um, you know, maybe you can bump up the offer. Sometimes you're a little bit limited because... Clients don't want you to, you know, overpromise and you get in trouble mm -hmm. with clients. So if that's the case, then increasing the proof elements on the page would uh, would make most sense. Now, one of the fastest way to to improve the proof element is to just add a proof element right on top, which is, mm -hmm. you know, fifty thousand, you know, UK residents or citizens have already, you know, uh, you know, been able to reduce their their car financing or or, or have mm -hmm. been able to use our service for car financing. So adding something along those lines is usually enough. You also want to add the speed benefit. Um, and now the speed can work in two ways. First is it's going to take 30 seconds to do this or mm -hmm. get your car loan approved in one day or something or 24 hours mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And that could be the other speed element that you bring to the table. That's the urgency and scarcity part in the headline mm -hmm. itself. So Amazing. if your start rate is too low, then I would test this, this, mm -hmm. this, and this, and the very first question. And uh, and that would be the my main uh, tests that I would do to yeah. increase uh, the start rate. Now, if they're, if they're falling off somewhere in the quiz itself, so that would be stats like this, and you would say like, oh my God, I'm, I'm losing a lot of people here. Then you mm -hmm. can either consider removing the question, rewording the question, changing the order of the question, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, okay. all this depends on what, what, what your very first node is. So mm -hmm. like, like I've, I've seen really silly things like, you know, what's your net worth as your first question or something, or what's your credit rating or something. So, you know, like, I mean, I, I know you're not doing that, but I'm kind mm -hmm. of running off this. Like sometimes you may invariably end up having a high threshold question. So I would reduce that. So for sort of like a question like, you know, is this a brand new car or a used car is mm -hmm. extremely low threshold. And sometimes you may want to increase the length of your quiz to bring them in to improve the start rate up the top. So okay. a short quiz does not necessarily mean a high converting one, because sometimes when you shorten it too much, you'll end up having the first question to be reasonably high threshold. And if it's if it's too much, then you're going to have people who don't start. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Perfect. Thank you very much. And no problem. Well, good question, actually. All right. Anybody else? Any other questions? I see a lot of... um. In terms of a uh, landing page yep. templates, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. In yep. terms of Are landing you? page template and the, and the top uh, top part, um, the one you have differs a lot from from what I see online. Uh, a lot of them have uh, like a hero image in one of the sides, and then you have a um, let's say a headline, three bullet points underneath, and then a call to action button where you um, you know. I, either a call to action box button or a, a small, you know, brief form. Um, is there any particular reason that you prefer this one as opposed to, to the one I'm, I just uh, described? Yeah, so I'm not going to say that um, uh, it's just this one here gets to the point right away. And uh, especially for your campaigns, if you didn't Google search and something like this would be handy because you're, the intent is so high. So let's not needlessly add in extra steps and extra work for them to go through just to give you information. If you've already made it quite clear in your ad that uh, you know this is a free quote, then what are we messing around for? They already know what the hell they're on the page for. So free quote, let's get to it. So uh, quick, easy, free quote, you know, hassle-free, whatever, whatever, start now, right? And that's that's the, the main reason for starting with this format. The other reason is that it's, it's nice, easy, and it's quick to set up.
Um, and then once you've got this done, this is your, your, your uh, get your benchmark rate. So let's say you find that this converts at 10%. Then you can come up with your bullet points and all the other stuff. Now, I've done that myself. Sometimes I'll add a bunch of bullets here and then have this underneath here. But it, but as you can see on the mobile devices, you know, we, we quite, we're quite tight for real estate. So I want to optimize for my mechanism, as in my decision tree, the quiz part, to be sitting above the fold. So I want to make sure that I don't add too much crap on the top here so that I need, don't needlessly push it down. Now, that is if I'm doing just lead gen and I'm only getting paid for leads because my goal, if I'm getting paid for leads, is to maximize the lead count and then have the client tell me that the leads are rubbish and then I can, I can, then I can, then I can increase the, the, uh, the, the, the things that reduce my lead count, such as, you know, phone verification or, you know, maybe pushing it below the fold and all that sort of stuff. And that usually increases the quality, even if it drops the conversion rate. So at the end of the day, obviously you want to keep the client happy. And that's that's the, the main main objective here. So it's it's to start out with, I, I want to I want to maximize, I want to give myself the chance of getting the highest number of leads in the lowest number of steps with the least amount of work. And that's my benchmark. Now I want to beat the benchmark. Sometimes what you're going to find is 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 by by adding those extra things, you actually reduce your lead count. Now, if you're getting paid on a per lead basis then you may want to re-question either you go back to the client and saying, hey, listen, as a result of what I've done here, I'm, I'm going to be sending you less leads, but they are going to be of a higher quality. Do you want to pay me more money? Or, or not in those terms, but you get the idea. You want to negotiate better terms from your client. If they agree to it, then that's not a bad move. In fact, I, there's some that I was working, they were spending about three to four mil a month. They had an entire campaign just for junk leads. And you might say like, well, that's a little bit weird. Yeah, it's because the client that they were giving leads to all they cared about is that one in you know eight booked a call or one in 10 or whatever the numbers were and as long as that that threshold was met they, they actually didn't care now if you if you went above the threshold so let's say for example one out of four starts converting for the client the client's not going to give you a bump in the payout so you need a whole bunch of junk leads to to bring the number back down to compensate you Right. And that's usually the conversation you want to have is that if I'm going to send you higher quality, higher quality leads, then I want you to give me a higher amount. That's usually a hard question to ask. And depending on how, how big the client is or who you're working with, if it's a large enterprise or, or corporate level client, then, you know, good luck. It's, it's, it, it's too many, too many uh, committees to go through to get that sort of thing approved. So you may not have choice but to uh, supply or to build a funnel that does not always result in the only the highest quality leads because you're looking for numbers of leads to compensate you, right? So that's kind of like, hopefully that sort of answers the question, but I would start out here and then slowly bring in the other bits and pieces to uh, to, to see it. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely makes sense. And, uh, and it's also, I guess what I learned is also uh, minimize the variables from the start and then you can always make it more complex. You can always add more, correct. If, if you correct. have a thousand variables, it's very hard to diagnose. Um, to, to, I think I have another an, another question because I'm, I'm uh, about to oh. be working on a landing page for a um, uh, jewelry store. Uh, they, they sell e-com, but they also do bookings if, if you're getting, uh, uh, if you want to, you know, try out a wedding ring and then you can go, right. you know, with your loved yep. one and then you can book a time um yep. this is uh the, the searches in google ads that it's not like people are searching for the same as in in the local uh, contractors like a, a painter near me or whatever yep. it's a little bit less direct yep. they're, they're searching for wedding rings or stuff like that some of them might be interested in buying online and and others might be interested in, in booking a time uh, so, so I was wondering in that case, how to approach that, because, uh, for, of course I could test out the framework you're, you're showing here, but, but do you think it's still as efficient or, or do I do, do no. I need to do more no. to, uh, to, yeah, to, yeah, know, correct, correct. Yeah, because, because, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The, 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 the goal is totally different. So in, in, the, in the case of the ring, a wedding ring, for example, that, that is an emotional purchase in, 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 I'm assuming that it's the guy who's searching but once again i don't know you, you you can you can correct me if that's wrong or at least there would be two segments there maybe the, the woman is i don't know that yet the, but yeah there'll probably be two correct. segments maybe two campaigns correct. yeah 
Right, exa exactly. So then you're going to be like, you know, buy your best ring for yourself kind of a thing or make sure that, you know, like kind of like buy, buy the ring where she kind of like falls in love with you all over again, that kind of a situation. If that's yeah. the case, then, then 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 your landing page is going to need copy that is much more emotional all around um, how you're going to make her feel about you because end of the day that's that's why you know the the rings that's what the rings about i mean you could you could try the the, the cheapskate angle <laughs> how to maximize your love for the lower spend kind of a situation <laughs> <laughs> you could you could you could definitely definitely uh, try that because they there are there is a, a market for for that so now you can wrap the two of them together obviously like you know you, you know get you know uh don't get ripped off with uh with with your uh, with uh, with uh, uh, for the ring for the most important kind of like you know day of your life or that that, that sort of situation, so so I would actually look at that now for a guy because guys uh, you know let's say it's, let's assume it's a guy and a guy buying for a female that is that's not to say that there are, aren't other types of relationships you can sell rings for let's assume that's the bulk of the market here, then you could say you know discover the the best ring for your uh, your your partner for your wife or your for your whatever. And then you can you can make it a real fun one, sort of uh, sort of. Um, and, and I did this once for the chocolate market, like like what can you say about chocolates? So we said you know uh, buy, buy 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 chocolates for uh, for your personality or buy chocolates for your loved one. And we said things like you know uh, at the party they're the life of the party, you know or at you know and you they're, they're questions that don't really have much to do with it. But what it does it gets them engaged. Uh, gets them coming down the funnel and talking to you because they, because our goal is end of the day we want their name email phone number and potentially sort of you know well, you know um uh sort of uh get the details of the person and, and how much they want to spend so you know things like you know are they the life of the party yes or no uh you know uh has she already told you with the kind of ring that she loves or, or likes or whatever and you can do that um have you have you already seen designs that you would that you'd be interested in and sort of using that as the as the first uh, as the first point of call and then you could do things like you know what shapes do you like you know and I, I would test that secondary because if it's if it's if it's for the guy market then I would just look at those sort of things and then saying you know based on what you've said um, we suggest you book an appointment to to get a free consult or something and that, that's where the offer would be for a free consultation but you're not leading with the consultation you're leading with 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 um, discover the best thing for her or discover the best thing for your own marriage or relationship. And then through that, you then show uh, the, the idea that, that oh, you know, you're, you, you should book a call because now we have enough information about, about who you are. So I would look at doing something like that as a first test. So the chocolate example, it was uh, someone who was doing uh, like, like adult chocolates, you know, chocolate in the shape of, uh, you, know, you know, body parts. And they're like, <laughs> how do we, how do we sell this? And so we made like, like really, and and they tried to do serious stuff, like you know, you know, you know, do they like dark chocolate or white chocolate, all that sort of stuff. And I said, no, no, forget all that. Let's just go for the real fun angle, like, like you know, what's your favorite, you know, sexual position in bed, and all that. Stuff. We we started doing, and those things work really, really well, because it it obviously has got no relevance to the chocolate, obviously. But the engagement is there. It's like it's it's that it's that I'm I'm you you satisfying people's curiosity, right? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it makes uh, definitely makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, so, you, so, so, so you're gonna have to use the, the right side of your brain. You're gonna have to use the right side of your brain more than the left side of the brain. This is the direct opposite to your floor sanding and all the other campaigns you, that you've been doing. It's a uh, uh, it's yeah, yeah it's, it's going the other way. Yeah. Or for the guy, I mean, it's, it's it will be interesting to test out. But for the guy, I think there's a lot of practicalities and also just you know getting it done. Basically, I mean, obviously making her happy, but it's it's uh, um, I mean, I was in that situation a few years ago, and for me, it was kind of like a it was a jungle. So you yeah. know, the fact that you could go to a place and that just get it done is, is actually a, a nice proposition um right yeah i was i was could exactly, I leave yeah. with a question like like what is what is most important for you i mean like quality or making her nice or make, making her happy or would that be a little bit too yeah no 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 um, that's that's absolutely yeah that's absolutely a perfect question in fact the first thing you, you could listen if you wanted to if it's a google search campaign just 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 go just go straight for the kill um have you decided the type of ring you want to buy yes or no 
or I need help to decide what ring uh, to buy. Mm. What if they and have? If what if they type in? Uh, we 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 decided, or we know what which ring. What should the follow up question be then? Cool. In that case, um, okay. So if you've already decided, then then uh, then you should book a call to see how we can get you the ring of your dreams or the ring you've chosen at the best possible price. Would it, would you put it in a text form so they could fill out information about it, or just just go for the girl? Um, uh, yeah, so 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 is it an e-com store where someone just adds to cart and buys? I I don't know if someone really buys. No, so they they need to book. Rings. They actually need to book an appointment. They need to oh, book an appointment and go to the store. Yeah, perfect. In that case, uh, go go straight to go, go straight to book an appointment. Okay. Yeah. Now that's that's yeah. your version one. Version two is I would say what type of ring have you picked. So you could do two three designs. Uh, you could go with uh, you know uh, you know. Uh, and and then ask things like you know what's most important to you, um, you know have you considered the price already? What sort of budget you're looking at? And you could get a little bit of extra information out of it because if you find like listen, hey, the person's already picked a ring, but the budget they've got is five hundred bucks. And let's say your client does not have rings in the five hundred dollar range, then you could just say I'm um, you know sorry, can't really help you there. And it's because no point wasting your client's time if they don't have uh, if you don't have. But I would I would validate that that assumption, okay? Because there are people. Who are cheapskates when it comes to like I don't want to spend more than five hundred bucks, and then they go in the in the, in the store, and the person in the store is able to move move their reference price through what they show them. I mean, you you see that a lot when it comes to home purchases, right? When whenever someone wants to buy a new home, they're like, "Oh, well, I'm not spending more than a million dollars." Next thing you know, they buy a house for one point eight. Oh, well, what's happened is because si situation's different. You you finally start looking. You realize the you know the, the kitchen's too small, or the or the or, or your wife's just unhappy, or the partner's unhappy with uh, with what you can buy in the million dollar budget. You got no idea. You you've got you got no choice but to move your reference price uh, because of what you're looking for. And that is the the job of the salesperson. The salesperson's job is to educate you, saying, yeah, you could really go with that with that with that five hundred dollar ring, but it really doesn't even look like a ring. And and so you know, did you really want to embarrass her? I don't know because because when it comes to emotional think, purchases, the salesperson I can think, really embarrass us, <laughs> really embarrass the crap out of you to go buy something expensive. I think just being in the store and uh, maybe maybe there's another couple next to them also trying out rings puts a lot of pressure on on the guy. So uh, yeah, I mean the closing rate is like eighty percent. Okay, um, yeah, cool. Okay, well in that case, well in, so, in that case, get them to the store in some way. Uh, yeah. And and yeah, if the if the closes are high, then 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 get get them into the store would be would be the best way to do it. But you got to make sure that the that the copy so test test a lot of emotive angles. Uh, uh, apart from you know your usual, you know get the get the biggest ring at the lowest price. Um, you you should test that because because uh, and see where 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 the market's at for for whatever keywords. Right. Yeah. So that would be. Okay. Okay, I have one last question no. if it's okay. Or should we move sure. on? Yeah. No, no, um, no, that's okay. There's this kind of saying in the in the business that you you, you know you have one uh, main argument and then you have supporting arguments and they should really be supporting the main argument. Um just sometimes I'm struggling a little bit with that um <clears throat> um <clears throat> in terms of how how uh, far away from from the main argument can I go? So, for instance, uh, get the cheapest ring, and then you know yeah. all your bullets on the page be supporting that statement. Uh, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. If, if you look at every good sales data, if you look at every good sales data, they have other other secondary arguments that that support the primary. So, so you you have the one main theme to bring someone in. For example, you know, get the biggest ring at the lowest price. Let's say that's the angle you're gonna go with. Right now, that doesn't mean that I can't say things like, 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 you know, I don't know, to discover the three designs that uh, are evergreen. So, so a, a design that, that even 50 years from now will look, uh, you know, just as relevant or modern, uh, you know, so, mm -hmm. so I, 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 that is a supporting argument. Well, and what that's showing me that while I want to get the, I want to get the biggest ring at the lowest price, I also did not consider that. Oh yeah, of course. My my marriage is going to be around for fifty years or whatever X years. Therefore, I want to make sure that my ring remains relevant. And then no one's ever said that in the market. And these are the only people who are having the conversation. 
So I really do want to book my call with them because they just educated me something about rings that I had not considered. And that's the reason for the secondary and tertiary arguments that you have on the page is because they allow someone to go, oh, yeah, aha, mm, oh, I didn't realize that. They, these guys look like the types of people that I should be working with because they've just shown me something or have revealed something to me that I have not considered yet. Does that make sense? So if this was, yeah, but if, if this was solar uh, and the main argument was uh, save money and then, then further yeah. down the page, would it then make sense to have a, a another argument, which is a, uh, it's a uh, you know environmentally friendly saving with the planet yes. blah 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 yeah as a that's section it. over that that's okay yeah, that's 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 exactly and, what this is about these are these are separate separate uh, secondary arguments that support that for example I may want the cheapest flooring but I don't want a guy to have a leave a mess around so one of my one of, well, one of my things could be that that our uh, you know that our flooring expert you know uh, you know um, I don't know leaves a place speak and span and removes all the all the uh, whatever the well it doesn't leave your place in a mess, unlike other uh, you know whatever flooring people or in the case of ring you know uh, use our our consultants to 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 find a timeless piece so that that ring never ages even fifty years from now. Okay, yeah, Something and, uh, okay. Make, makes sense. And uh, and uh, sorry to go into details, but if if you have a specific section. Um, within that section, would you then have all three like things that plays on the environment then, or would you have like uh, would you mix it? Would that be okay as well? Like uh, you know, save CO two. Uh, we clean. Uh, we don't leave a mess yep. and stuff like that. Because would that be fine, or is or are those two sort of yeah, going okay. in uh, different right, directions? Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I think I think that should be fine. Um, Except you know something about the segment that you're getting the leads from where they may not like the environment. For example, let's say there's a group of people out there who, who don't believe in climate change, for example. Mm. Say. Well, then, then they're introducing things like, you know, save the world and all that sort of stuff would probably repel those people. They're like, oh, this is some, you know, tree hugging <laughs> website. I'm not, mm. I don't want to work with them. I don't want to give them my money. So, so you just want to be... Yes, they. While you can, you wanna you wanna also be aware of concepts that not everybody accepts in the market, and so so and 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 so you just wanna be careful that you don't. So, for example, like okay, so I know I know a lot about a, a lot about the the solar space in the U.S. Uh, there was a Pew Research report that came out that found that 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 kind of like uh, Democrats buy buy solar. For, uh, for benevolent reasons, like save the world and environment, all that stuff, while Republicans, generally speaking, are buying to uh, for empowerment. They 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 are making the decision so their family is protected in the event of a of a crisis or a storm or whatever, right? And so now you've got you've got two groups of um, two groups uh, two distinct groups, and so they may or may not be be uh, be persuaded by the environmental claim. And uh, and so the way we did it is is we had a we had a, a massive list of zip codes um, based on based on whether it was a Republican zip code or a or a uh, or a Democrat zip code and it would uh, change the headline in real time. So we did uh, basically this this technique here, uh, where we were looking at not necessarily the ad itself, but we were looking at the 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 zip code that they were coming from with the GOIP data and then changing the headline on the fly. Right, so that as an example. So, so while, while generally speaking, you can kind of add whatever you want as a supplementary, uh, as a supplementary, you want to be careful of any concepts that are polarizing, that you don't want to include. So, for example, if I was, let's say, doing a um, a, a political campaign for, uh, let's say, Donald Trump, right, I would not add things like you know universal healthcare. Because his audience is obviously against that, or at least my, if my, based on my understanding, is is not for it. So I would not want to. While it's a feature that is 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 valuable to some group of uh, uh, or some audience, it's not applicable to everybody. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it completely makes sense. Cool. Um, yeah. Right. There okay, was awesome. a question Thanks. further up. No worries. Say hey, no. Thanks for asking. Uh, has it been effective to improve, this is from Steve, conversion rates for local uh, GMB businesses? 
uh, opposed to uh, to get the people to take action. Has it uh, has it been effective to for local uh, businesses like dentists uh, as opposed to uh, phone number to take action? Okay, yeah. So Steve, uh, there the the thing you want to consider is what is the the hook uh, of the ad itself? So let's say for example, let's pick dentist. Uh, you know, if your ad is all around fix a, fix your toothache then you you may want to go directly to a phone number. So you want to go uh, dial a phone number. If it's obviously it's one client, then you just put their phone number in. But if it's, a, let's say, if you're doing a paper call campaign because you've got a whole series of of, uh, of dentists that you've signed up uh, and you are allocating calls at random or something, then you may want to use something like uh, uh, like um, uh, like Ringba and do and do uh, uh, the 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 uh, number pooling. But your but your thing would be for uh, book a call now, especially for something like a toothache or something like like that. So where I I, I need that fixed yesterday sort of a situation. Now, if it's something cosmetic, like you know, straighten your teeth so you can I don't know marry your prince, that you can go to a form um, because you and then that one can go to a quiz where you would ask things like sort of you know we could have maybe you know. Uh, is this the first time you're looking at a dentist or not? What what is your current condition of your teeth? Do you have missing teeth? Do you have this? Do you have this? Uh, when are you looking to 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 get this fixed? And that could be in a or in a a form, right? So so looking at so once again you want to drive uh, your 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 quiz your decision making from what is the intent and the solution that being that's being sought. Obviously, if someone's got uh, for a plumber, let's say if it's a uh, if they their their bathroom is leaking or or some sort of plumbing thing that's destroying the house right now, that has to be a 24 seven kind of a phone call. And I would look to include that in the ad itself that our plumbers are available for emergency work 24 seven. So Steve, does that answer the question? Perfect, awesome. All right, we have, uh, yep, now just was good. Yeah, I'm done that one, done that one, done that one. Makes sense, yeah. Now, regarding the the wedding ring, just just remember that 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 not everybody purchases for price, uh, especially in that space, and that's one space where you could really get quite emotive. So so don't leave that segment of the market uh, away. Right. Cool. Any other questions? Good questions. Hope you're enjoying this format. Yeah, really good, Nick. Good format. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. That allows me to riff. <laughs> awesome. Cool. If, does anybody else have any questions? Or any any lead gen challenges you're facing uh, right now uh, in your businesses that I could uh, I could help with? Yeah. Remember, guys, there's no silly questions here. Um, you know, I think we're, we, thanks, uh, Nick. Jacob, we, we've all, yeah. Uh, John here. Uh, I've got a, uh, a person or business that's um, in the golf industry and yep. they're uh, starting a new database uh, where they're offering golf tours and special deals and all this sort of thing. How can we use yep. the decision tree to attract future members? Okay, so what's the what's the the offer here? It's it's a place that you can go play golf, or is this a golf equipment or no, golf info products? Well, their, their main yeah. product is a, is a product where each week you can select a level of ten or twenty or fifty dollars that you put in like a, a wager, I guess, that you'll beat your handicap, and based on how how many people are in that pool. You get a percentage of, for instance, if you had a twenty dollar wager and you beat your handicap, then you would probably earn anywhere from uh, one hundred and twenty dollars to maybe three hundred and fifty dollars. But they're now developing it where they're selling a lot more product. They want to build a database to get to know the people better and offer them uh, golf tours and uh, other people's merchandise from, say, Drummond Sports Store, that sort of thing. Okay, so I would just do a contest for that group. So win something around golf because they're interested in golf. The reason why I'm suggesting that, and, and because that wager thing, you'd you'd come across 
lots of rules and regulations when it comes to to running online ads. So I'm not sure whether you'll be able to get away with that because it's a wager of some sort, which means you need to get the local licensing rules around gambling and or uh, games of chance. And so it makes it a little bit difficult just to run an ad without getting those licenses in place. So I'd be a little bit, yeah, once again, uh, you can get that sorted out. If, if you can, then by all means, that would be something to consider. But if you're looking to build a big database so that you can bring the pool into wanting to wanting to put a wager on, then uh, I think uh, things along the lines that are relevant to this group, which is, I don't know, win the, uh, uh, I don't know, Tiger Woods, uh, uh, you know, golf club. Uh, you could be something on those lines. Maybe win free games, a free entry to a golf course. Um, and, well, and they're doing, hopefully... they actually got a $20,000 golf trip that they're giving away they? um, on their initial Okay, launch. perfect. Okay, well, 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 if that's the case, then then, then I would, yeah, then, then you know, go, go, go nuts. Uh, you can run like like games of chance. You can run ads on Facebook and stuff. I've I've seen that. Um, so, but I but you need to get the uh, you know the, the local state has to give you like you register your your contest or whatever. So once again, I'm not right. I'm not overly yeah. familiar how it works in WA. So so as as long as that's done, then I I would go just yeah win twenty thousand uh, dollars trip for your golf and go and hit all the, all the golf lists. Um, if they've got only got a list, uh, upload that and just do a one percent, two percent, three percent, four percent lookalikes, and just go and get those guys. Yeah, they've got a few because this would have to be like a Facebook type campaign. It, it, it can't be searched because obviously then they won't be searching for for um, for this. So it would have to be something along the lines of Facebook and or TikTok. Um, or also don't don't neglect Twitter because obviously this audience would probably be have a higher representation in Twitter. Okay, well, I'll, oh, I'll check the regulation side of it. I'm talking to on Thursday, yeah. so. Yeah, but but the client may already know about it because if they've been in the game a while, then they would know these sort of things and just and just 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 piggyback off them, uh, as far as all the all the all the all the regulation type stuff is concerned. But yeah, a contest would be perfect for this thing, and since you already got a contest to run, because your goal here is to build a massive list, and then keep hitting the list every week to to wager something. And so, so, so the fastest way to build a list that I know of, essentially, is uh, especially for this market, is to win something that they really desire, which is that that twenty k trip, or something in those lines, or memorabilia, or whatever it be. Once again, I'm not, I'm not a big golfer. I played once. I chopped so much grass. <laughs> 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 I I knew that wasn't that wasn't going to be something. That wasn't going to be my career of choice. <laughs> Well, you could do what I did on Saturday the first time in my life, and I'm I'm a seven handicapper, so I can play a little bit. And, uh, oh, oh, okay, uh, so you you you're pretty good. <laughs> uh, I I swung the club on a, on a tee shot, and uh, the club hit the ground, and my wrist had been hurting it, and somehow the club flew out of my hand. The two of the boys were watching the golf ball, and they said, "Oh, it's gone up there, and it's gone in the bunker." And I said, "Yeah, but where did my club go?" And had not the slightest idea, and, and right in this part of the course is bush about chest high, deep, full of snakes, and goodness knows what. And nobody saw my club going there, so I ended up losing my club without him. That's the first for me. You you lost your club. I lost the club. Yeah, we couldn't go in the bush. We didn't. Nobody saw where I landed. We weren't looking at the club. <laughs> so fair, fair never enough. let go of a club in my life. But anyway, it's something different. Uh, yeah, thanks. Cool. I like no, this no worries. Yeah, done. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Hey, no, no worries, Jason. Awesome. All right. Well, if there's uh, no more questions, we'll call it uh, a night, and I uh, look forward to seeing you in another two weeks, where we'll uh, do the same thing again. If there's some way you want to improve the format, please. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, Nick, my email. One question: When's the yeah, AI? Yeah, sure. took AI coming out the um, Chris builders. Uh, yeah. So um, we we already improved our our bot that you see inside there. That's uh, just for help purposes. Um, we're hoping to have something released, um, hopefully in the next two to three weeks. The only delay here is I'm not too sure what's going to happen to OpenAI because with uh, Sam leaving and then joining Microsoft and 
the board leaving and uh, I, <laughs> who knows, <laughs> maybe it's the end of open AI. Uh, I don't, so, so, but we have other options. We are, we are looking at Anthropic. I just uh, was playing around with, uh, with uh, Claude today. So, and also self-hosted uh, LLMs as well. So that's one of the other things we, but that project we were working on already, because I figured at some point we, we're going to have to provide the option. Um, the open AI debacle has has uh, sort of uh, proven to me that 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 is a risk mitigation strategy that we should take uh, seriously. So Eagle is uh, anthropic right there, playing with Claude. So uh, yeah, that's uh, so that's that's uh, that's what we are looking at uh, right now. Awesome. Yeah. Could, but could could you explain exactly? How it works. I mean, yeah, I have a hard well, time picturing exactly how it how it works for uh, you know communication with um. Uh, oh, okay, clients. yeah, sure, sure. I mean, yeah, I'll, uh, no, no, it's okay, cool. I'll uh, I'll share with you uh, an example, and hopefully this gives you. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go open. All right. So what this one does uh, at the moment, I'll uh, just, just remove the useless uh, nodes here. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Yes, I am. Okay. So this one here, um, uh, in fact, um, Meds, you might find this interesting. There's someone in the fencing space that's actually using this very setup. Obviously, I, I was playing around with the with the doctor example, uh, and the reason so. The reason why I share these silly examples and not something real is because whenever I pick a vertical to to present something in, uh, I sometimes get a PM saying, "Why, why, why are you telling everybody there's an, that, that that my niche makes money?" Uh, and it's never intentional on my part to talk about that. So that's why uh, that's why I, I I do things like this. Doctor Open AI, it's gonna you know check your medical condition. That's the reason for for doing it that way. But essentially, what happens here is uh, here is so this is a a very uh, sort of, you could say like the, the worst type of example that we have, uh, which is uh, you, you uh, in the case of fencing, you um, the, what they're doing is they're, they're generating quotes in real time based on the answers that they were grabbed from inside, uh, inside the quiz itself. So for example, the person's name, and then they would uh, um, do things like, um, uh, like, you know, how big the windows are, there's some cost information, um, you know, their budget stuff, whatever else they've asked, they, they put that all over here and they tell basically OpenAI to generate uh, a custom quote uh, using the information you've provided uh, and make it persuasive and yada, yada, yada. And as a result, it generates the, so the final thank you page, this page here, uh, this shows up as a full quote and then they've embedded the form on the bottom over here. And they're telling me that the conversion rates are really, really good. So that's a simple example. The one that we're working on is, is that based on the questions and answers you have, we're going to have a node that looks, well, not quite this, but it's going to be a bit more structured. Uh, it'll actually start a, a chatbot. So it'll take all the information, and now it has context. Plus, it takes the information that you've added inside inside the your, your version of this. So... We'll be, you'll you can either you know put a URL in. We'll scrape your website, so it'll have context around your client and or uh, information related to your your client or your business. So the chat is not just an LLM chatting, but LLM chatting with respect to the answer that you've you've already gained from the decision tree and the inf the extra information you provided already. Um, so therefore, the the prompt. Um, acts in a, in, a, in a fairly relevant way to start the, the, the conversation. And then at some point you can trigger uh, to step out of it um, to a thank you page or, or perhaps to a form or to whatever. So we're looking at an ability for you to uh, start an AI-based chat anywhere inside your decision tree after you've gained some information from your client. Of, of course, you can start it right at the top if you wanted to, and that would act like a normal chatbot does. But without the context, um, or you could use the chatbot to get context. But I'm like, well, we might as well just ask the information in a normal, uh, in a normal, uh, uh, in just a, with a normal quiz, and then move it into the chat. 
Does that give you kind of two working examples? Yeah, it, it, uh, in a way, I mean, it, it does does make sense. I'm just wondering. Uh, I guess I'm wondering uh, how what what it can do that you can't really do when you create your decision trees manually, and then uh, and then two, uh, how you sort of limit the chat bot in 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 what it's yes. saying. I'm sure that there'll be some outliers that are you know. Not uh, no no no. We yeah. yeah we've been playing around with guardrails a lot, and you can control a lot. So whenever you okay. whenever so let's say someone says you know give me the recipe for I don't know uh, making soup or something, it'll say I'm so sorry. Uh, you know what? It'd be good if you ask questions related to whatever fencing. So that that's 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 no longer a problem. We've been able to solve that problem. Um, so that's that's fine. Um. Uh, sorry, what was the other one that you said? Uh, so that's oh, kind of like oh, a, that, that was the first one, and then the other one is um, uh, just comparing it to a normal decision tree. Uh, I assume it's because uh, you can have the person just typing in uh, loads of uh, <laughs> PS in theory, Text. and then and then yeah. the chatbot will be able to summarize it and then give an answer based. Correct. On yeah. That. So so right now, good point. It may be that the chatbot does not beat a normal quiz. Um, and maybe it does. So we're giving the option of for you to uh, execute it in whatever way that you want. The, the The goal here is not to a priori decide whether bots work or don't work. Uh, let, let let we will have the market decide uh, that that whether whether the, the bots going to work or not. And you may even obviously in most cases you would have a decision tree uh, or decision node I should say the yellow one which says that oh, you know based on the answers they've given this is not someone I want to chat with anyway they're useless or whatever, that's not someone that I want to work with. And so you can just kick them out while everybody else could go to a, a bot to move on to the next phase, which is the sales conversation. But you're right. Um, I, I'm not sure at this point whether the bot itself is going gonna, is gonna to necessarily uh, is going to add that much value. But to me, this use case has a lot more merit, which is where you are, you are dynamically generating content on the fly, such as a form copy your your thank you page copy or copy where you're allowing them to give things in their context because that makes a lot more sense to me so for example you 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 would uh, maybe you, you would use the geo ip data uh, you would use uh, their location data you would use their name address uh, the, the type of thing they're looking for and it be and and guiding with a prompt what to generate that could create so for example the feedback that i've received from the fencing people uh, that that, that the lead quality is really, really high uh, because they, they're much more committed and motivated to want to commit to it because obviously you, the uh, the final page, the, the copy that's being generated is very much in context and in reference to the answer they've already been given. And so it, it forms a, a much more relevant conversation and it's unique to them because that, that, that particular thank you page uh, or, or copy will never be generated again. Uh, unless someone specifically, I mean, even when you give the same answers, the 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 LLM gives different uh, different versions. We I have a client that um, it's a painting company, and they uh, they have a uh, sort of a a chat, not chat bot, but a, a chat uh, on the website uh, that's managed by I guess students or young people. They just answer like basic questions. And often they just say, "I can't help you, but I'll take your number, and then we'll call you back." And it right. uh, it works okay in off hours and stuff like that. Yeah. But I was just wondering yeah, that so, this, so, this could probably so, uh, you know replace, replace that, that and yeah. even be better. Uh, could Correct. you get it to? Correct. Yeah, because you know, like... yeah, because because yeah, yeah. So so what, what and 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 so the missing link is not is not the LLM. That's 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 not the problem. It's not open AI or whatever the, the LLM that you. Uh, the AI that you're using, it's it's that extra information about the business. So, for example, let's say if uh, if your client has got like, like let's say for example the last 150 conversations that those students have had that they could not answer, like I'm going to pick your number, and let's say if your client went and gave you a blurb of the response that they gave when they came back to the office. So, for example, maybe they responded to them via email. If you had all those email responses that were sent to to answer those questions that the students couldn't answer, that that would be fed in as as 
uh, as into the uh, into the AI model, which means now the AI knows how to answer those questions that the students don't know how to answer. Mm. Which means, which means it moves the conversation much further, all the way to why don't you book a call with us? So, because the end of the day, all, all you're looking to do is is to build enough familiarity, and and have enough rapport with the with the person, so that when the AI suggests book a call that they go yeah absolutely i'm ready to book a call and then at that point you just show them you know a calendly or something on those lines and they would uh, you know pick the date time and and uh, and submit and uh, and end up on in the calendar that that would be the purpose yeah. of this because it allows you to get to that stage with ai while normally you'd say you know just fill out the form or give your details and we will get in touch with you this allows you to move the conversation a little bit further and to go to actually booking uh, a time or date uh, in the uh, in the calendar itself. And, I think and then what you can do is you can take off. Because, Correct. You know, a lot of the questions Correct. are the same. <laughs> Basically, you know, yeah. what is the price of this and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you could probably train it quite fast. And, Correct. Um, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, it's exactly. interesting. Um, uh, since, since now I'm talking, uh, I know I asked about this before, but what is the timeline on uh, also being able to, uh, change the design on the decision tree itself, uh, in a, what you see yeah. is what you get editor, because I, I, I really, that, uh... I really spent a long time on making the appearance. So it fits my landing page. Um, yep. yeah. Um, so we've. Got a working prototype. Um, I should have an answer by Friday, just to see uh, when we'll release it. So we, we're gonna we're gonna release the landing page version soon, and then some point later we'll release the actual nodes itself because the nodes are are quite quite intensive. They, they, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes for us to just put a put a put a paint on top of it. Now, having said that, um, generally speaking, you don't do a lot of design in the DT itself apart from changing the fonts and stuff. So I'm a little bit curious to see why you've had to do a lot more work inside Leadzook itself if if it sits it's, on an external page. It's so, stuff like uh how it's stuff like how to how to uh make the button smaller, how to center it, uh you know right. then it's often it's okay, this button you need to change this okay. uh, if it's this kind right, of okay. position tree and uh there's so many <laughs> variations. Um Okay, cool. Okay, so 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 if that's the case, then what I would do is if you've already got a design that you like, then I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there's an import yeah, export know, function yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. So this this could be the the an, an easy way to transfer, and I'm assuming you know between between client to client, obviously there are variances. If you this could be one way to transfer, uh, you know, hopefully fifty to eighty percent of the of the of the of the design. Uh, and then, so therefore, you don't have to do that much more uh, inside inside uh, inside Leadsook itself. So that's kind of the best option at the moment. But very soon, uh, yeah, once once you get the what you see, what you get inside Leadsook, um, it might take an, another you know couple of weeks for us to get some prototype going. Uh, but the landing page version, that one should be released reasonably quick. So at least you don't have to mess around with WordPress if you don't want to. You can just do it directly inside inside uh, Leadsook itself, yeah. So hmm. okay, yeah, that, not, that's not the most trivial soon. task because, because because obviously we need to also make sure that page speed is, uh, is still 99 and all the other stuff. So um, yeah. so while, while while delivering the design part is easy, uh, but maintaining uh, the page speed is, is not that easy. No, yeah, but that's also like small errors. Like if I want to put in the, the Danish flag in front of the telephone number and I want to center it, then it really uh, it doesn't put it close to uh, to uh, to the um, to the form, and then I need to do custom CSS, and it's not really yes, working. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Now, so that 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 won't be uh, there won't be no need for any custom CSS because obviously you'll be able to drag and drop it into whatever position that you want. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, a little bit longer. Yeah, I, I know. Listen, it's it's. Uh, I'd love to build Roman one day, but uh, we also need to make sure that we are testing things properly before we release them, uh, yeah. so that we don't create more problems uh, than than not. But but that's very close. There's going to be an AI component that comes into that as well. So one of the things we are testing right now is um, 
is you can actually put your URL and we'll actually suck your existing page inside leads into leads hook. Okay, nice. So yeah. that way, hopefully it saves you. So, um, so you're, so you're saying probably two months, then it should be out. Should be. Is the, that what yeah, you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping sooner, but, but, um, uh, so I'll tell you what, what the delays are in mo it's not the feature delivery is that every day we, 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 we look at the stats on performance, like platform performance. And yeah. so if you see any, any, if you see any inefficiencies, anything that's looking a little bit like, Hey, you know, what looks like there might be some issues here. Um, the, our priority is to go and uh, go and investigate that. And most of the times, 99% of the time it results in nothing. It's just, uh, mm. but the point is that because of the amount of money that's being spent on ads, that is coming to Leeds Hook, our number one priority is to make sure that your ad spend is not is not wasted, for example, by no, no, I, something like I get it. Right. I get the stability. Yeah, so, is so, important. so um, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so uh, it's, uh, but, I'd love to. But other, what, if, if I were to make this uh, wedding ring thing and I wanted to get it up and working soon, uh, like who can, who is the best to hire if I wanted some help with the um, design? Because I could spend a day you know, struggling with that. And it's probably better that yeah. I just pay someone. Yeah, fine. All right. You know what? Uh, send us a message as to what you're looking for. And yeah. and, and let's see. If, uh, we, I might just okay. assign it to one of one our... Yeah, we used to do services before. We don't do much of it anymore. But we do have the capability. So I'll just uh, uh, give it to one of our guys. He's... Uh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's yeah he's one of the best designers that I've ever worked with. And so I'll... I'll yeah, maybe we can just give it to him okay. internally. Yeah, nice. Okay, okay cool. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Matt. No problem. Any other final questions before we call it a night? Okay, cool.